Falkland Railway runs for a little over seven miles from the seaside resort of Tarin to Nantequiranol. In the peak season, no fewer than four locomotives are needed to operate the service. Not surprisingly, the locomotive shed at Pendra is a hive of activity in the early morning. The first locomotive has already left the shed before the final locomotive is lit up. Coach sheds are also located at Pendra, which is a quarter of a mile from the railway's main station. This is number six, Douglas, a product of Andrew Barclay and Kilmarnock. The 040 was built in 1918, but now has a new boiler, which was fitted during its recent overhaul. In 1950, the line was threatened with closure and a preservation society was formed in the same year. Some of the Reverend Audrey's books were inspired by the Talithlin and, in 1988, the former Corris Railway locomotive number no. 4 was repainted and renamed to look like one of the locomotives featured in the books. Needless to say, it is very popular with the many younger visitors to the line. There are several halts and six stations. The first of these is a Pendra. This used to be Tawin's original terminus for passenger trains. It was rebuilt in the early 1980s. This is the oldest intermediate station on the line. It was opened in 1867. Number one, Talthlin is the railway's oldest locomotive. It was built in 1864. Glass is a little over three miles from town and is the site of the railway's first passing place. There are no signals here. The six lever frame controls the points for the passing loop and siding. Hayden sets out on the next part of the journey to Dolgoch. Douglas uses the three arch viaduct to cross the deep gorge close to the famous Dolgoch Falls. <laughs> Up trains stop here to take on water. On this occasion, 
It is number seven, Tom Rolt, which entered traffic in 1991 and is the railway's heaviest locomotive at a little over 14 tons. The second passing place is at Abergenolwyn. It is believed to have the longest narrow-gauge platform in Britain. At 620 feet, it can accommodate two trains. The line continues to climb as we travel along the section to Nantes-Guerano. Before 1976, only goods and mineral trains were seen on the final three quarters of a mile to the Talathlin Railway's eastern terminus, where, from 1866, slate from the quarry at Brineglius began its journey by rail to the sea coast. A train ride from Tauern along the Cambrian coast takes us to Fairbourne. Of all the lines featured in this programme, this railway has the smallest track gauge at just 12 and a quarter inches. A locomotive fleet of half-size replica locomotives was built in the late 70s. One is housed in the annex and three are accommodated here in the main shed which adjoins the station platform. The intermediate halt boasts the longest station name. This can be translated as the Norfolk Station with its dragon's teeth on the northerly Penryn Drive on the golden beach of Cardigan Bay. Russell approaches the passing loop, which is in use during the summer months. Trains leave the two termini simultaneously. Radio contact is maintained between the two drivers. A replica of the Linton and Barnstable railway locomotive runs close to the sea for the final part of the journey to Port Penryn.
Cafe links Port Penryn to Barmouth. For a return journey, the railway's largest locomotive, the Gullet, is in charge. The railway is adjacent to the former Great Western Station at Aberystwyth. Its three steam locomotives are housed in the shed which serviced the standard gauge locomotives over 30 years ago. Today, a superstore joins the Vale of Rydals platform as Owen Glendower leaves for Devil's Bridge, almost 12 miles from the coast. There are seven intermediate halts and stations. Despite appearances, this location is very close to an industrial estate on the outskirts of Aberystwyth. A little later, number eight, which once carried the name Llewellyn, approaches the station at Nantironan. There's just one passing place. There is no signal box, just a control panel which is operated by one of the locomotive crew. The line's terminus is a short walk from several attractions, notably the Minnock Falls. The line has the distinction of being the last steam railway owned by British Rail. For a time, the locomotives, which were built in Swindon in 1923 and 24, appeared in rail blue livery. The line was privatised in 1989. The railway runs through Woodland for much of the way. And not surprisingly, the locomotives have been converted to oil firing.
This locomotive has recently returned to service after overhaul at the Brecon Mountain Railway's workshops at Pant. The works and rolling stock storage area form part of the railway's main building, which was developed over a period of 15 years. This locomotive saw service in South Africa and is nearing completion. Whilst this is the most powerful locomotive ever built for the two-foot gauge, it also worked in South Africa. Wet weather is often good news for preserved railways, because competing attractions become less attractive. The locomotive in steam is almost 90 years old and was rescued from East Germany. It has travelled over 65,000 miles since 1981 and received a new boiler in 1993. At present, the railway is three and a half miles long. And, once more powerful locomotives become available, activities will focus on extending the line by another two miles. The railway runs alongside Talvecan Reservoir as it travels north to the terminus of Dolagaya. On the return journey, the train stops at Ponstikiv, where there is an opportunity to top up the locomotive with water. On kinder days, passengers take the opportunity to walk alongside the reservoir and admire the scenery in the shadow of the Brecon Mountains. The Flambeus Lake Railway lies in the very heart of Snowdonia. During much of July and August, 
Two locomotives are in steam to operate a fairly frequent service between the main station at Gilvakthi and Penthlin. The line runs alongside Lamberis Lake, giving easy access to the Kundarwin Woodland Centre and the Padam Country Park. Snowden dominates the skyline to the south. Bayer Station lies to the northwest of Snowdon Summit and over 3,000 feet below. The railway possesses a total of 11 locomotives, four of which are diesel powered. Four of the steam locomotives are now over 100 years old, including number four, Snowden, and number three, Wuffa. They were built by the Swiss Locomotive Works. The track is fitted with a double-bladed rack which had to be modified after an accident on the very first day of operation, on the 6th of April, 1896. However, trains have operated safely ever since. Note the angle chimney. The railway travels over four and a half miles and takes passengers to within a few yards of the summit. There is an average gradient of one in 7.8 and the steepest is one in five and a half. There are three passing routes, and interestingly, more than one train can occupy a particular section of track. At halfway, steam locomotives pause to take on water. This is number six, Padan, and it dates from 1922.
Octavia Valley Railway is one of two narrow gauge lines which use the track bed of former standard gauge routes. Hempton Station is on the branch which ran from Carmarthen to Newcastle Emlyn. The numerous attractions at Hensland and Woodland Walks add to the appeal of this one and three quarter mile long line. Trains, hauled by either Sergeant Murphy or Alan George. Double heading is usually confined to special events. The railway's headquarters at Lanva Karanian lies at the western end of the eight mile line, which was built to a gauge of two foot six inches. The railway became part of the Great Western Railway in 1923 and survived into BR ownership before closing in 1956. The line's first two locomotives, built shortly after the turn of the century, are still in existence. One of these, the Countess, stands behind the diesel locomotive. The rusted locomotive, an 080 tank, is somewhat younger. It was built by Franco Belge in 1944. There are a large number of ungated level crossings for the train to negotiate before reaching Welshpool Raven Square. Originally, the tracks continued for another mile or so to the former Cambrian railway station. However, one of the conditions for the reopening of the line was that this section should be abandoned, and so the new owners had to build a new station here.
the largest intermediate station is at Castle Caranian. This is roughly halfway between Welshpool and Llanfa. There are several other halts, some of these having passing loops. The first arrival of the day reaches Lanva around lunchtime. There is a slightly longer layover than with later trains and quite often the opportunity is taken to replenish coal stocks. This is another railway which uses the track bed of a former standard gauge line. In this case, the former Great Western route from Rwabun to Dorgethli. The narrow gauge train started running in 1972. This station used to be Bala Junction where the standard gauge line from Blinifest to New York met that from Dolgethley. is a 10 minute walk from here. The railway runs alongside Paula Lake for over four miles. There are four intermediate stations. The largest of these is Thlangua. The standard gauge station was located a few hundred yards away in the direction of Bala. The railway operates four return trains each day for most of the late spring and summer. These are hauled by either Maid Marion or Holy War. Both locomotives were built by Hunslet at the turn of the century. The village above the lake is the English translation for the small village where the railway's headquarters are located. Much survives of this Great Western Station and the Bala Lake Railway has added other buildings such as a locomotive shed for its fleet of three locomotives.
The Welsh Highland Railway Centre is a few yards from the Stander Gauge Station at Porth Madog. The original railway was once the longest narrow gauge railway in Wales. It ran from here through Snowdonia to Dinas Junction near Carnarvon until closure in 1937. Precious little has survived, though thankfully one locomotive is still in existence. Russell was built by Hunslet in 1906. The train stops at Gellert's farm, where the passengers are invited to tour the works. Dean Russell, who's our, our flagship, the most famous. Once back on board, the train continues to the present terminus of Penamount. Incidentally, foot plate rides may be offered to passengers, but at an extra cost. The railway hopes to extend the line by a further two miles to Pankreuzer. The Festiniog Railway was built over 150 years ago to transport slate from the mountains around Blyney Festiniog to the coast at Porth Madog. The famous double Fairley tanks go back to 1870. They were needed to haul heavier trains up the steep winding slopes of the Festiniog. These are double bogey engines. They have one long boiler with central fireboxes. Each end of the boiler is mounted on a swivelling powered bogey. This locomotive, Earl of Marionneth, 
was built as recently as 1979 at the Railways Works at Boston Lodge, which can be seen in the distance on the right. In 1993, the leading locomotive, David Lloyd George, emerged from Boston Lodge. On this occasion, it is seen on a running intern. The railway is over 13 miles long and possesses three passing places. Two of these are at stations, whilst the third is at Rio Gorg, about two miles from here. A single journey takes a little over an hour. Most trains have refreshment facilities, but the use of non-corridor stock means the staff serve drinks and snacks during some of the station stops. The 262 tank, built by Alco in 1916 for War Department duties in France, arrives at Tannibourg, en route to Port Maddox. The station was in use from 1873 to 1939, though Slate was still transported during the war. The station reopened in 1958, a large refreshment room is open during the summer months. is perhaps the most interesting request halt on the line. The track shown curving to the right was not the original route to Blainai. Instead, it took a more direct course. However, in 1955, with the line having been closed for nine years, two reservoirs were built at Tanagrisii, and the track bed was submerged by the lower reservoir. Part of the railway reopened the same year, and Fialt saw passenger trains in 1968, but it was not until 1982 that trains were able to run all the way to Blymouth New York. This was achieved by building a much higher alignment which runs through a tunnel and gains sufficient height by means of the spiral here. This is the only one in Britain. Work was also needed near Tanagrisii because the rock face here had become unstable. The Sinio Railway now has a new terminus at Blainai, on the site of the Great Western Station. The Slate Mountain still remain and serve to remind us that without the efforts of so many over the last 150 years, Wales would have been a much less interesting place, both for tourists and railway enthusiasts alike. <laughs>